MKBHD just said that the iPhone 14 camera is getting worse. Is he wrong? Well, yes, at least in some ways. Now, in this video, we're gonna show you guys the ways that it has been getting worse, but not only that, how you can fix it right now. And I actually went out and I updated all of the software on the S22 Ultra, the Pixel 7 Pro, and the iPhone, and took some more images to show you guys the differences. But not only that, I'll also show you how some of these issues that he talked about have actually been getting better because over the years, I've been comparing the last three generations of iPhones to see what kind of improvement we have been getting and what he did not talk about. Now, right out of the gate, I wanna say that yes, we are an Apple channel. We love our iPhones and some people say you are biased, even in the unbiased blind camera comparisons where we don't know which phone took which photo. So because of that, I'm actually bringing in two professional photographers to look at over-processing specifically, and they can vote which photo looks the best without knowing the brand. So we have a bunch of photos that I took. If you guys wanna see that video, I think it's gonna be very interesting and entertaining. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button down below. Now, I really enjoyed MKBHD's video. He had some awesome graphics, some great explanations and animations. And one of the things he said is that in his test that he's done, the iPhones regularly lose right away. Now with that, they also did a more scientific one in the iPhone place somewhere in the middle. But with that, he still gave the iPhone 14 Pro the best overall camera award for the fourth year in a row. So how does that make sense? So why would he do that? Well, this is what he said. That scientific test that we did tested one specific thing. It tested the, the small postage stamp sized, you know, exposure and colors general thing with a bunch of different factors. So you can see a small little thumbnail sized image that's very compressed. But sharpness and detail with all the compression that we did wasn't tested. Also speed of autofocus, reliability of autofocus, the open close time of the camera app, how fast and reliable you can get a shot, and also video wasn't tested. So the microphone quality, video quality, speed and reliability of autofocus there, file formats, sharpness, HDR, all that stuff wasn't tested. Now I have tested that against the 13 and the 12 and it took an insane amount of time. I shot over 300 photos and in this 13 and a half minute video, we covered everything. So before I show you guys the differences and where the iPhone suffers, let's see if it actually has gotten worse over the last couple generations. In this tough lighting situation, nobody could say that the 14 Pro looks worse than the previous iPhones because not only is the HDR better, but my face has a lot more detail and shadowing, making for a more natural looking image. And that was one of the biggest points in his video, the faces are brought up too much, they are too flat, and they just look over-processed. And in this sunset image, once again, the face looks more natural than the other shots. Now, it is brought up a little bit more, and we'll see how it compares to these Android phones with the latest software updates, but saying that the 48 megapixel new sensor having way worse processing because the software is just not up to date doesn't look to be the case. We also see that in this image where the face has more shadowing and more definition. And the 14 Pro's image here looks a lot more DSLR-like and natural with 48 megapixels compared to the 12 megapixel images which Apple has been using for many, many years. Now, one issue with the iPhone's photos over the years is that they had just had too much warmth in the face. But when we look at three generations at once, the 14 Pro Max looks pretty good. We have some highlights and some shadowing. I would say the 12 Pro Max looks second and the 13 looks the worst. So even though I agreed with him when I initially watched his video about over-processing and the new sensor, when I actually looked at the side-by-side -side results from my own testing, I was like, no, it is not the case. Now, another sensor that was updated was the front-facing selfie sensor. It's still 12 megapixels, but it's a brand spanking new one. And look at the results right here. It looks more natural in terms of lighting, and they're focusing on the face instead of the HDR. And with the ultra-wide camera, which is still 12 megapixel, the 14 Pro Max's looks the most natural, with the face being brought up the least. And with the telephoto camera here, we see that the 14 Pro Max's 12 megapixel looks the most natural, the least warm, and the most realistic or true to life compared to the last two generations. Now there is one issue 
with my images is that all of these are taken with light-skinned people and just like MKBHD said, that is what the camera is being tuned to, whereas the Pixel with Google's real tone software that focuses on getting all sorts of skin tones right, does a better job with darker skin tones. And I would have to agree with that, but I can't say that the 14 Pro has taken a step back because of its new sensor. Now, outside of people, one thing I can say for sure is that Apple has turned up the contrast in the saturation with this 14 Pro. When you don't have a person in your photo, you guys can clearly see that the saturation contrast is boosted up, the skies are boosted up, a lot closer to what the Pixel has done. And in the past, Apple's really had their contrast turned down, but now they are kicking that up. Now I would say that I prefer the 14 Pro Max's shot here. The grass looks green, the sky looks blue, but in reality, it was not that saturated in terms of color as to what my eye saw. Now this extra contrast and saturation has caused problems for me. We have been recently shopping for countertops for our kitchen remodel uh, that we are doing, and I noticed that when I would take a picture, it wouldn't look like the real life slabs that I was taking a photo of. And other people have mentioned this, where some people are now shooting video and then pulling screen grabs from that video to get accurate colors, which is exactly what I was doing. Here's one example that I got from our updated blind camera comparison that we're doing. And you can see the regular photo has much more contrast and saturation than the 4K video clip, which looks way closer and more true to life than the photo, so Apple's processing is different between both of those. And I know that my real estate photographer friend, which will be coming on for that blind comparison, used to take photos with his iPhone so that he can edit the raw photo more true to life based on the scene, which you can no longer do. And I think that is a bigger issue. Now, some people say, that you should use a real camera because it doesn't have all that extra processing like MKBHD showed off where you have the HDR, you have noise reduction, you have brightening of the subject, but there is one big caveat that a lot of people don't know about or they don't mention. When you take a raw photo, it is just raw data. So because of that, when you open it up, well, you need to edit it yourself. So you're the one that's doing the processing. Now, if you open up that photo, you will get a different result based on what program you open it with. So you can't really say that it's true to life. So here in a Mac OS program, you have one set, Affinity another, and Lightroom, the photo looks totally different. And then when you go to edit, it's up to you to choose your exposure, your brightness, your saturation. You choose what you want the image to look like. And then with that, you also have a bunch of filters and AI options that Lightroom has, which can brighten the face, but it looks hilariously bad compared to what the iPhone is doing. And the end result is all up to you. Right here, we have one edited, one just opened up, and neither of these images look like they did in real life. Now, I have one tip for you guys that do have an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max if you want to get those natural colors back and that is to shoot with ProRAW instead, even if you don't edit it and you just use the tip that I showed off where you can convert the ProRAW to HEIC to make a much smaller photo, but still regain all the detail and the more natural processing. Let me show you guys the difference here. So we have a regular photo on the left and a ProRAW unedited and converted on the right. And you guys could see that the regular shot brightens up his face a lot more. The shadows are lighter, not like it is right now recording me. And then the pro route looks a lot better and more natural. And not only that, you guys can see how much more detail you get and it's real detail, not over sharpened because it's 48 megapixels, not 12. And then we have a massive difference in terms of compression issues where we have a lot of artifacts with the regular shots, but the converted pro raw looks so much cleaner and better. And you might think that the file size will be just absolutely massive, but look at the difference, 2.1 megabytes compared to 3.9. Yes, it's bigger, but it's not a huge difference once you make the conversion and delete the Pro Raw image. So I would absolutely say, if you're having the issue that MKBHD talked about, the face being too bright or too saturated, 
Use this with your iPhone to get much better looking photos. Now with that said, how does the Pixel 7 Pro and S22 Ultra compare with their latest software updates that I made sure to do? And here we have that same image and you see that the Pixel 7 Pro actually brought up Vadim's face more so. Now, of course, yes, he is light skinned, so that might be a difference, but the iPhone does have more shadowing on the face. Now in this shot with a lot of white, the iPhone's face is brought up more so than the pixels, but you guys let me know which one you prefer. And in this tough selfie shot with harsh lighting that I did on purpose to look at the shadowing, the iPhone is somewhere in the middle. And of course, MKBHD didn't talk about the selfie camera in his video. Now here is a shot of a house and here you can see that the iPhone is way too warm without a subject there, and the house is white in reality. And in this one, the face is brought up more so than the Pixel, but not as much as the Samsung. Here's another really tough shot that is backlit with lighting coming in outside that window. And you guys let me know, does the iPhone look like its face is brought up way too much? or does it look fairly natural? And of course, with that, if we crop in, we look at the other parts of the image in terms of detail, uh, artifacts, and noise, and you guys let me know which one you like better. Now, there are a few more images that I found with the iPhone, but not ones that have to do with the new 48 megapixel sensor. For example, for selfie shots uh, that don't have light in your face, I consistently saw that the iPhone was too flat and too cool in the winter time. Now in these, the pixel looks too dark for my liking, but the Samsung looks amazing in every single way. I took a ton of different photos that we are gonna be covering in that blind camera comparison along with video. For example, we have the slabs here, and I wanted to see which one mo looks most true to life. And in this case, it is the iPhone, and that's why I was grabbing screenshots from video. Uh, but make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys see that blind camera comparison with professional photographers choosing which one looks the best and which one is the most overprocessed to see is it really the iPhone? I can't wait to hear their opinions. So make sure you guys have notifications enabled as well. Now the iPhone does have some other issues with this new sensor. I would say the main one is the fact that the minimal focusing distance is really terrible, like we've shown off in the past. Compared to the 12 and the 13, it's much further. Now it does have that macro mode. Uh, you guys see in this bug shot when Apple enabled it last year, try to fix that, but the image looks way worse than before. So because of that, a lot of times I would just enable the 2X mode, get further away, and take a better looking photo. And that just has to do with the lens that's in here, the sensor is larger, and even though this camera bump is the biggest that we have had ever, it's still not big enough for this sensor. And photographers will spend a lot of money, for example, we upgraded two lenses just because the middle focusing distance was much better. So that is what I would like to see with the iPhone 15s. So with that said, the iPhone does have some issues, including some color and contrast issues that I don't like for me personally. You can edit your photos and you have your own preferences, but I will not say that the new sensor is what is really hurting Apple because comparing it to the previous generation, even with the issues that were mentioned, things have gotten better, but you guys let me know your thoughts down below. Don't miss out the blind camera comparison. It's gonna be amazing. If you guys wanna pick up one of these iPhones or one of these Androids, use the YouTube shopping feature, the card and the link below. Click that circle button to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right there, like the ultimate comparison with the generations. It's been Max and I'll see you in the next one.